Welcome to Nothing But Net with head coach Robin Shear Wells from the University of Evansville. Coach, thank you so much for being on the pod with us. You bet. Thanks for having me. How's it going? Like, Happy New Year, all that stuff. What's going on? It's hard to know what date it is. You know, it's just <laughs> like, it just feels like it's nonstop right now. You know, um, Christmas feels like it was a month ago. I, I don't know what, what, what day it is and all that good stuff, but, you know, um, happy to head into the new year and another chance at win some basketball games. I'm telling you, I like, I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know what day it is. I know what the date is. That's how I kind of operate this time of year. How do you manage it? It's exactly, I don't always know what the day or date is, but I know how many games or how many days it is until a game day. So it's just kind of operating on, you know, we're, we're two days out from a game. A lot of people, um, when they hear coaches talk about not getting practice time and then you're just going from game to game and you're just prepping for the next game, what's it like now this time of year when you do have some time to practice and you do have no, you know, no academic work to worry about right now? How's that fit? It is a nice time of year because I do feel like we're working on more detail things than you can at other times of year. Um, you know, once school gets back into session, there'll be a little bit less time for that. So right now we're, we are trying to take advantage of having a little bit more time and cleaning up some of those detail things, more breakdown stuff in practice, um, more chance to work on situational scoring, um, situational defense, those type of things. So trying to take advantage of these little windows where we can do that. A lot of times when we talk situations, we always think about it from an offensive lens, but there are ATOs from a defensive perspective. And, you know, I say the product is the narrative. Parity is in our game. You better be good at situations because every game is going to be close or it, it feels like it. How do you take uh, a, um, a perspective on that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we do talk about that, you know, and again, you talk about the things on the offensive end, um, but there's things on the defensive end, like you said, you know, there's things that you can do in those defensive situations. Do you put your big on the ball, no matter who's taking the ball out of bounds? And then if you do that, what are you doing with the other four players? You know, I mean, we do work on those type of things and talk through those type of things as a staff. And, you know, how can you try to disrupt teams, you know, on their advances at the end of a game? Um, just like you also try to anticipate what might they do to you to disrupt you. So I love the situational talk. So let's go into um, some things about your philosophies, if you will. Like, um, do you always call timeout to advance the ball? Some coaches do, some don't always call timeout. How about um, two for ones? Or how about, you know, um, up three, do you foul? Um, pick any of those or all of those and take us through it. <laughs> You know, generally, I, I am a timeout hoarder. Uh, there's there's no question. So um, it's pretty rare if we're getting to the end of the game and I don't have at least three timeouts. So I am generally uh, an advance it um, philosophy type coach. You know, I want to get it into the front court, especially with this group. You know, we've struggled against some pressure in the back court at times. So, um, you know, this year's team, just kind of knowing my team gets us a little bit more set into a, into a spot where I know we can get the ball inbound. So this group has been, a you know, we would advance it more often than not with this group, but I do, you know, there's certain teams where I agree. It's not always in your best interest to advance it. If you've got, you know, good inbounders and, and kids that get open really well sometimes doing that in the full court is better than pushing it to the front court so you know to me that's very much a year by year in a in a team by team situation um the two for one I love the two for one I love the two for one concept um you know we haven't harped on it as much this year we did work on that quite a bit last year as a group um we we, I mean, it's not a secret. We called it 21. You know, I think anyone can figure out what that means, but just giving our kids, you know, the mindset of understanding that we're trying to go for a two for one um, years past, you know, we've done it where we have certain plays. There's a certain play that we're, that we run on the front end of the two for one. And there's a certain play that we, you know, use the end of clock play. So I love, I love the two for one. And I love that concept. Can you do all of those things, the advancing the ball, the two for one, because you've got a veteran point guard and does that matter? That definitely matters. You know, having kids um, that you trust in those moments that are going to implement, you know, that they don't have to look back at you, that when they hear a simple, you know, cue that they can go out and run it and execute it. Um, yeah, it's, it's great when you've got an experienced point guard that can be an extension of you on the floor. 
Okay, how's the health of your team and what are we working on improving upon in the off in this break right now during the holidays? You know, we've been a very banged up team all season. It's impacted our depth and Fortunately, none of it has been season ending or anything like that, but it's impacted um, just practices, our ability to have everyone available in practice. Um, you know, my Clark's been banged up all season. She's playing heavy minutes through it, but it does impact the amount that we can practice with her. She had her had her knee scoped over the summer and, you know, just kind of dealing with with just the after effects of that. Um, Abby fight was really banged up last weekend and our, you know, home openers for conference play. She wasn't her normal self. She's starting to look better this week, but, you know, just continuing uh, Barbora Tomasova, our, our um, starting post player, also been banged up all season, also had a bout with COVID, you know, so it's just those things that impact your um, ability to practice as a cohesive team. I think we're still finding our way through some of that cohesion. Um, and, you know, again, haven't had a full squad in practice. I don't think a single time this season, but some of the things that we're working on now is just, you know, we've, we've turned the ball over too much, um, you know, this season and, and that increased from last year and just kind of trying to First of all, figure out why <laughs> we're mostly the same players. Um, but second, trying to clean it up, you know, where it, I, I'm not one of those coaches that's going, okay, that's going to fix itself on its own. We've played enough games now to see that it's, that it hasn't really gotten better. So we're working on it. So that's been a big thing, taking care of the ball, knowing the situations. And we've been working a lot on, you know, kind of score, stop, score, or stop, score, stop type situation. You know, we've given up a couple of runs in these first few conference games and just, you know, trying to learn some toughness through those runs and, and how we can minimize that. I look at uh, free throws and turnovers kind of uh, in a similar um, lens. You know, if you're not a good free throw shooting team, is this something that you talk a lot about with your team or you just work through it? And if you're turning the ball over a lot, you're trying to preach to value the basketball, but they're just not getting it. You know, do you keep doing certain drills or do you change up or do you make it more competitive or, you know, what, a, what do you do to get their focus on understanding the value of the basketball, every possession? We've started tracking it in certain drills. Um, and I'm always a little hesitant in that because we play at a really fast pace and, and, and sometimes with our pace, you know, there's a certain amount of turnovers that for me as a coach, I go, okay, we're going to have some turnovers here and there because we do want to push the ball. We do want to, you know, we're going to take some, there's acceptable um, challenges that we're going to take on with that. But right now there, it's just too high. So we've gotten to the, you know, and I don't want kids to overthink because I do want them to play with freedom and do feel like they can go out there and try to make basketball plays. Um, so we focused more on um, just the turnovers that I feel are a lot more controllable footwork type stuff. You know, we've, we're, we're getting some footwork turnovers, mm -hmm. the half court turnovers where we're really into our sets and some of its decision-making, you know, and those are the ones we're really trying to clean clean those up, but we've looked at it from all phases. You know, we're back to working on different transition drills. Um, we're tracking it in our, in our half court offense. We have within a drill, like, okay, if we're running this eight minute segment, we need to keep it at two turnovers or less, you know, we're going to track that. So anything over two turnovers, we're going to run it down and back for, um, you know, just trying to make them a little bit more conscious of valuing the ball. Okay. So I'm taking a few notes while you're while you're talking, because I'm, I'm thinking about a couple of things that you just said there. Um, taking care of the ball is important, right? We know that you can't turn a ball over. I think um, in years past, I have tried to push this with athletic directors that I think in your contract, you shouldn't have a bonus for academics or for attendance, because I think those are byproducts of what your job is naturally supposed to be doing, helping your kids graduate and trying to put a product on the floor that's good that people want to come and see, okay? so. If there was an incentive for coaches, not just you, but for coaches in general, if their team shot 45% from the floor and didn't turn the ball over more than 12 times in conference play, so you're going against teams with like resources and um, like competition, what, what would you say to that? Oh, how, how do I get more of that? <laughs> <laughs> Can I get, can I get that on my, on my team right now? Yeah, um, you know, I mean, certainly like, I don't know that I've ever had a team that only that only averaged 12, 12 turnovers a game. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me as a coach, but um, 
but yeah, you know, there's I mean, not many out there, Robin, that do turn the ball over less than 12 times. So yeah, yeah, exactly. That, that, that's a, that's big bonus area, right, right there. So be bonus for the game for sure. Okay. Did you yeah. get everything that you wanted for Christmas? Um, no, because I didn't get wins coming out of Christmas. So, so no, I, I didn't, I didn't get everything I wanted, but I got great time with my family. So, you know, that's, that's what the holiday is all about. And, you know, now that I've got a, a young son, I mean, it's all, it's about all about him, him and the pup, the pup was better at opening presents than my son was. <laughs> he, he still, uh, I, I underestimated how hard it would get to how hard it would be to get my 14 month old to like sit and actually open a present. So we're, we're about a year away from that, I think. Well, you mentioned Jet, which is your little boy. And last year at this time, when we talked to you, you were adjusting to new motherhood, figuring out how the balance of the schedule. You know, I always say there's a rhythm. There's not really a balance to what we do as moms, as career moms. Um, how's it going um, with that rhythm, with Jet and with your team and all the things that you're responsible for? You know, some, some weeks it's just taking a day at a time. So, <laughs> you know, this morning we had a 10 a.m. practice. I had a, a checkup doctor's appointment for Jet at 9.15 that I was hoping would only take a half an hour. We <laughs> planned practice yesterday. We, you know, I told everyone like, I might not be being there in film. I, I hardly ever do that, but of course the appointment went long and I, I made it in the gym about 30 seconds before we finished warm up. So I was here in time for the start of practice, but you know, like that's just life as a mom, like couldn't change the appointment, couldn't change our practice time. So, so here we are. And, um, you know, just kind of take each day as it comes. Jet's in the gym a lot with me. You know, he comes by and visits and, um, the girls get to see him and, and the girls see, you know, get to see me kind of, you know, doing it all. And, you know, some days go, some days go better than others, but, um, you know, I'm really, really fortunate to be at a place like Evansville that embraces all those parts of my life. And that I do have a place at work where, um, because we work long hours that Jed is always welcome and, you know, get a chance for him to, to grow up amount, you know, around these amazing young women. I 100% agree with that. I think it's important that the young women that you're surrounded yourself with get a chance to see you balancing all the things and the tasks and doing all of it. I mean, you can do it all. You just have to figure out how to do it. It's definitely doable. Um, it is. I'm glad to see it's you're doing it. Village. <laughs> do. The other thing I want to ask you is uh, the college football playoff situation has been unreal. I don't, I know you're a big Michigan fan. I tend to lean towards the Buckeyes a little bit just because I spent four years there. You spent four years at Michigan. When you're watching the college football playoffs, and I know you got a little soft spot in your heart for Michigan, um, how'd you handle that game? You know, it was, um, I handle those football games a lot better, like now that I'm into basketball. Um, I didn't handle those games as well when I was younger, you know, and younger in coaching, um, as you, as you get a little older, I, I think it's some of the, like the extreme fandom, like I will always be a great Michigan fan, of course, but, um, my team had lost that day. And it was just like, I was hoping Michigan would give me a little bit of the <laughs> pick me up coming out of our loss. And it just, it just didn't happen. And it was just kind of, to me, it was like the, Want one the end of an already like tough day for me and then you know for them to just not have a very good start to their game and not be able you know they should like they got my hopes up for a few minutes and then it was just back to like couldn't get a stop and it just it just felt like it was par for the course for me for that day it wasn't a good day for my team well it was quite remarkable to watch the playoffs that's for sure and it sets up for uh tcu and georgia to have a great college football national championship game uh, anything else for the good of the cause? <laughs> no, we're just, you know, we're excited to get on to our next, you know, next group of games. I mean, for me and your two, we're still, we're still building and it, and it was really tough for us to, you know, lose our two opening games at home. Cause we had chances, you know, and we had, we just, you know, gave up a couple runs in both games. And it was just a reminder of, you know, we're still building. We're really, really close. Like, I really feel like we're going to win these games, but it's also a reminder to me, you know, as a coach and as the leader of this program, like each day I have to be, you know, teaching our team what it looks like to win, what it looks like to win and all those little moments. And, um, you know, these things, sometimes they don't happen, you know, quite as fast as of course we all want them to, but I also, 
um, I know how hard my, my kids are working and, and the direction that our programs head in. So I'm just excited to play the next game. It's just another chance to, to get better and win another one. Well, that's the right attitude this time of year because it is definitely in the grind. And uh, I think there's times in our year where we have a, a, a lift around the play for K games and then we have a little bit of a dip and then we get ready for postseason. So we have another another lift uh, and, and it does ebb and flow. And uh, we're pulling for you, Robin. We're hoping that you can figure it out and that your team keeps executing in those situations and uh, find a way to, to get a W because getting a W it is not easy and it requires a whole village to do so. <laughs> it sure does. Thanks, Debbie. It's a, this conference is an unbelievable conference. It's, it's a grind, but um, it's, you know, it's really a privilege to be, to be coaching in this conference. Uh, so many good teams. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.